Hey dolls, so today I'm coming to you with another braid tutorial. I posted the style that you just saw on Facebook a few months ago and it got a lot of popularity. It was during the time when lemonade braids were popular, but no one had quite seen them that size just yet. So I thought I'd come to you and show you how I was able to achieve these jumbo lemonade kool-aid banana bread band-aid i don't care what you call them i just want to show you how i was able to get the braids to look very full and very thick with minimal spacing so again i won't talk much on how i do my feed-in braids that's simply what these are large feed-in braids because i already have a video on how i do them so if you'd like to see a tutorial on how i do these braids just check the description box and i'll leave the link below and also i just want to make note that this trick that i'm about to show you does not only apply to feed-in braids this can go for ghana braids regular scalp braids any kind of braids anytime you have a client with hair that's uh, thinner and not as thick and you want to have as least spacing as possible you know this is how you would accomplish that okay you guys so are you ready for the big reveal dun, da, da, da. and the trick to minimal spacing is simply the party I've seen many people have the tendency to believe that in order to get a bigger braid you need a bigger part well no it's simply the opposite if you want your braid to appear bigger but you still don't want that spacing you part the section the same as you would a normal braid and you just use slightly more hair so when you part a bigger part and you use the same amount of hair your braid is going to be the same size you're just going to have more gaps and more spaces in between it and if you part a bigger part and you use more hair you're just going to have a bigger braid but still have a lot of spacing and a lot of gaps so you simply want to keep your parts the same as a small size braid and then you won't have that spacing so I know you're saying well it still looks spaced out to me you can still see the gaps but once you're done with the style you'll notice that all of those braids have pushed up against each other and sealed those gaps so the more braids I add the more these spacings that you can see will begin to close up So here you'll start to see those spaces that were kind of bigger at first are now beginning to get smaller and smaller and the braids are appearing to be closer and closer together. And that's going to occur the more and more braids I add. And you can see it here very clearly that as I continue to braid and pull that braid, that gap is closing on its own. Now, one of the key things I want to note here is that you want to make sure your braid has a lot of movement. You don't want your braids to be so tight and stiff that they don't move. Now, I tell people all the time, my braids may look tight, but I promise you they aren't. My clients tell me all the time that my braids are very, very comfortable. And that's because I make sure they have movement. I do not try to grip so tight that I'm pulling my client's scalp that does not help your style last longer you want your client's head to feel very comfortable once you're done braiding but you want to make sure that your braids have movement for one for this that we're talking about now for the spacing you want them to be able to push against each other and actually move if they push against each other but they're so tight that they can't move it'll only cause tension on your client's scalp and you'll still be able to see the spacing but secondly, you want your braids to be able to move simply because your client is going to have these braids in their head anywhere from three to six weeks. And during that time, their scalp is getting minimal amount of air, which means that it's going to be harder to keep it moisturized and it's going to be begin to dry out and itch a little more. And let's be honest, you all know how it feels to get that itch, to get that itch sensation. 
and you cannot get in there and scratch your head you want your clients to have a little bit of space you want those braids to be able to move so that they can keep their scalp moisturized underneath those braids they can get in there and moisturize their scalp and they can also get in there and scratch i mean hey scratching is not good for your scalp you really shouldn't dig in your scalp but come on now we all got that little itching sensation before and, and nothing's gonna beat it i mean you can you can beat sense up in your head all you want pat pat tap tap but it's not the same as getting that actual scratch so hey now at this point i want you to notice that i parted her edges a little bit thicker than i did in uh, the previous braids and that is because every client's head is different their shape is different, their size is different, and of course the texture of their hair, their curl pattern is different. Now her hair is straight right now, but her natural pattern is a B pattern. It's very curly, very soft, and very fragile. So for her edges, the last thing I wanted to do was part a tiny section of hair and have that big braid pulling on just a few screens. That would only cause her edges to rip. So what I did was made sure I parted it thick enough in the front, a, a big enough part to where her braid had a nice foundation to hold on to. So no, her hair is not gonna look identical to the picture that you saw at first. And that's not what we're trying to do here. Every client is different. We just want to get the style to look as similar and just make sure our braids don't have huge gaps. So once you get to the top, nothing changes. You still want to part small sections of hair and add uh, just a little bit more weave to make that braid a little bit fuller. The pattern that I chose here was simple. I did three braids in one direction and then I'll do three in the opposite direction and then I'll do three coming back in this direction. Okay, and so once we're done, you guys know the routine. First, we're going to slick down those baby hairs, get those in shape. Um, she didn't have many, but you know, just whatever. And then we're gonna mousse down their scalp. I did moisturize her scalp with our drops. I just did not, did not show that step. Then we're going to uh, tie it down so that the frizzies can lay. Remember not to trim too far up the braids. Her hair was super long, so I'm only trimming the end of the braids. And then also the same goes when I dipped the braids. I did not dip more than halfway up those braids because her hair was, again, super long. And so once you're done, this is how it should look. As you can see, you can barely see any spacing um the braids look very close and very full i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up leave a comment in the description box below if there's anything else you'd like to see me try on my channel for now that's all i have dolls <music>